Let's discuss how the facial nerve innervates the facial muscles and how this can manifest in the clinic. Now in order to do this, we also want to differentiate upper from lower motor neuron lesions in the face. So let's start with upper motor neuron lesions. These can occur anywhere from the motor cortex all the way down to the facial nucleus in the pons. And this would manifest as motor weakness on the contralateral side. When we look at lower motor neuron lesions, they occur anywhere along the facial nerve. And you would get motor weakness, but this time it would be on the ipsilateral side. Let's talk about forehead involvement because this can often be a major clue to help you clinically localize the lesion. The forehead is bilaterally innervated. Both of these motor cortices send projections to this facial nucleus. Because the forehead is innervated bilaterally, if there's any problem using the forehead muscles, it must be because of a lower motor neuron lesion, as it is very rare for both hemispheres to be affected at the same time. This is also important for differentiating between a stroke and some other condition. In a stroke, the use of forehead muscles would be retained in the vast majority of cases. Would you judge this to be an upper motor neuron or a lower motor neuron facial lesion? This is a lower motor neuron lesion. In fact, this is Bell's palsy. You can see that this is a lesion affecting both the upper and lower face on the patient's right side. There is a broad differential for acute facial nerve paralysis, which includes AIDS, Lyme disease, herpes, sarcoidosis, tumors, and diabetes. However, if in fact the paralysis is idiopathic, then you would call it Bell palsy, and this is actually the most common. It is usually treated with prednisone, so a typical steroid, um, but in most cases that actually result in paresis, if the paralysis is not complete, then it will resolve on its own.